you have come back to Lily's Viking Adventure, and I'm so happy to see you. So I hope that you're enjoying these. I hope that you've enjoyed the series on Lord of the Rings. I've gotten something like six hours recorded now. So that's been amazing. And rereading that story has been really cool for me. So I hope you're enjoying it. If you are, uh, please do a like, do a share, do a comment. All those things help with my YouTube algorithm so that more people can see the content. And I like doing it. So if you're enjoying it, if it's helping you, if you're learning things, then uh, help me out. It's everything says, apparently, statistically, asking people to do that helps them remember to do that, I guess. We're weird. Human beings are weird. But um, it will definitely help me out. And I greatly appreciate it. I like the comments, too. And I try to... Um, respond to those as I get them. So today and ongoing, I'm going to be trying to do some more videos on Sather and uh, just kind of share some more information with you about that. It's kind of piecemeal because I have to use articles. I'm not able to uh, use copyrighted books, which have much more depth and information to them. So I'd highly recommend if you want to learn more about it and more in-depth that you get a book. But in the meantime, today I have an article and it's a pretty good one. And it touches on pretty much everything a little bit. So we will get started with that. Say their symbols. A Journey Through Norse Magic and Spirituality In the mystical world of Norse mythology, say that our symbols hold a significant place. These powerful tools of magic, deeply rooted in the Viking Age, provide a fascinating insight into the spiritual beliefs and practices of the Norse people. This article will take you on a journey through the origins, evolution, and significance of Sather symbols, shedding light on their role in Norse magic and society. Sather, an ancient form of Norse magic, is a complex system of spiritual practices that encompassed divination, fate manipulation, and sh shamanic journeying. At the heart of Sather were the Sather symbols, potent tools used by practitioners to focus their intentions, connect with the spiritual realm, and perform their magical workings. These symbols, often inscribed on staffs, distaffs, and other ritual items, were not merely decorative, but held deep spiritual and cosmological significance. Origins and Evolution of Seder, the story of Seder and its symbols, is a tale of cultural exchange, spiritual evolution, and the quest for knowledge and power. From its early shamanistic roots to its integration into the Norse belief system, Sather has left an indelible mark on the history and culture of the Norse people. The birth of Sather in the Viking Age. Sather was born in the Viking Age, a period of exploration, trade, and conquest. This was a time when the Norse people came into contact with many different cultures, each with its own unique spiritual practices and symbols. It is believed that Sather may have been influenced by these encounters, particularly with the Sami and Feno Yurgic -Yur peoples, leading to the development of a distinct form of Norse magic. Cultural influences on Sather. The symbols used in Sather reflect a rich tapestry of cultural influences. For instance, the use of staffs, staffs and distaffs in Sather rituals may have been inspired by the shamanic practices of the Sami people. While the intricate designs and motifs found on these items bear similar similarities to the finno ugric art, these influences not only enriched the symbolic language of Sather, 
but also contributed to its evolution as a unique form of Norse magic. Integration of Seder into Norse beliefs over time, Seder became an integral part of the Norse belief system. The symbols used in Seder were imbued with cosmological significance, reflecting the Norse understanding of the universe and the supernatural. For example, the web of Wyrd, a common motif in Seder symbols, represented the interconnectedness of all things and the complex web of fate that governed the lives of gods and men. Seder practitioners, roles and challenges. Seder was practiced by both men and women, known as vol volvas or sidekulnar. These practitioners played a crucial role in Viking society, using their knowledge of Seder symbols to offer guidance, healing, and protection. However, they also faced challenges and stigma, particularly in the case of the role of women in Seder. In the realm of Seder, women known as vulvas or Seidkonar held a position of high esteem. They were the primary practitioners of this ancient Norse magic, often recognized for their exceptional spiritual insight and wisdom. The vulvas were skilled in interpreting and using Seder symbols, which they employed in various rituals to divine the future, heal the sick, and manipulate the threads of fate. Their role extended beyond the spiritual, as they also served as counselors and mediators in disputes, helping to maintain social harmony and cohesion. For instance, during times of conflict or uncertainty, a vulva might be called upon to perform a divination ritual using sailor symbols, providing guidance and insight to help resolve the issue. Their ability to weed, wield Seder symbols and navigate the spiritual realm made them indispensable figures in their communities. The role of men in Seder. While Seder was predominantly practiced by women, there were men who also engaged in this form of magic. These male practitioners, despite facing societal prejudice, utilized Seder symbols in their rituals, often in secret or under the patronage of powerful figures. One notable example is Odin, the all-father of the Norse pantheon, who was said to have learned Seder from the goddess Freya. Odin's association with Seder, despite the societal norms, underscores the importance and power of this magic practice. It also highlights the complex dynamics of gender, power, and magic in Viking society, where the pursuit of knowledge and power could sometimes blur the traditional boundaries of gender, gender roles. Societal attitudes and stigma. The practice of Seder, particularly by men, was fraught with societal tension. Men who practiced Seder risked being labeled Arger, a derogatory term implying unmanliness. This stigma stemmed from the perception of Seder as a female-dominated practice, and men who engaged in it were seen as transgressing traditional gender, gender norms. However, the societal attitudes towards Seder were not entirely negative. The power and knowledge that Seder practitioners wielded symbolized their use of Seder symbols also commanded respect and awe. This duality reflects the complex relationship between power, gender, and societal norms in Viking society. Ritualistic Practices in Seder Seider rituals were complex ceremonies that often involved the use of Seider symbols, chanting, drumming, and other forms of ritualistic behavior. The goal of these rituals was to alter the practitioner's state of consciousness allowing them to connect with the spiritual realm. During these rituals, Seder symbols served as a bridge between the physical and spiritual worlds. They were used to focus the practitioner's intent, invoke the powers of the gods, and manipulate the threads of fate. For example, a Seder practitioner might use a symbol representing the Norns, the Norse goddesses of fate, to influence the outcome of a particular event. 
these rituals were not performed lightly. They required a deep understanding of Saitar symbols and their meanings, as well as a strong connection to the spiritual realm. The ability to perform these rituals effectively made Saitar practitioners an important part of Norse society, respected and feared in equal measure. The importance of trance states. Trance states were a crucial component of Saitar rituals. They allowed practitioners to transcend the physical realm and connect with the spiritual world. In these altered states of consciousness, practitioners could perceive the threads of fate, communicate with spirits and deities, and manipulate the energies of the universe using Saitar symbols. Trance states also facilitated the journey of the soul, a key aspect of Saitar practice. In these journeys, practitioners could traverse the nine worlds of the Norse cosmology, gaining wisdom, insight, and power. The ability to enter and navigate these trance states was a mark of a skilled Saitar practitioner. Techniques for achieving trance states. Achieving a trance state required a combination of physical, mental, and spiritual techniques. One common method was through the use of rhythmic drumming or chanting, which helped alter the practitioner's brainwaves and induce a trance-like state. Some practitioners might also use psychoactive substances to facilitate their journey into the trance state. However, this was not a universal practice and likely varied based on individual and cultural preferences. Sayur symbols also played a role in achieving trance states. By focusing on a specific symbol, practitioners could align their consciousness with the energies and meanings associated with that symbol aiding in their transition into the trance state. Divination and communication in Saitar. Divination was a central aspect of Saitar practice. Practitioners would use Saitar symbols to gain insight into the past, present, or future, or to communicate with the spiritual realm. These symbols served as a language through which practitioners could interpret the will of the gods, the movements of fate, and the messages of spirits. Communication in Saitar was not limited to divination. Practitioners could also use Saitar symbols to send messages or requests to the gods, spirits, or other supernatural entities. This could be done for a variety of purposes, such as seeking guidance, requesting assistance, or expressing gratitude. Healing and protection in Saitar. Healing and protection were important aspects of Saitar practice. Practitioners would use Scyther symbols to channel healing energy, ward off harm, and protect individuals or communities from negative influences. In healing rituals, Scyther symbols might be used to identify the source of an illness, guide the healing energy, or seal the healing process. These symbols could be drawn on the body inscribed on a talisman or visualized in the mind's eye. For protection, Scyther symbols were often used to create wards or shields around a person, place, or object. These symbols served as barriers against harmful energies or malevolent beings, providing a safe space for the individuals to live, work, or perform their own magical practices. Healing Techniques in Scyther Healing was a significant aspect of Scyther with practitioners often called upon to cure illnesses or mend injuries. The healing process in Scyther was holistic, addressing not just physical symptoms, but also the spiritual and emotional aspects of the ailment. Scyther symbols played a crucial role in these healing rituals. They were used to diagnose the spiritual cause of the illness, guide the healing energies, and seal the healing process. For instance, a practitioner might use a symbol associated with a particular deity or spirit to invoke their aid in the healing process. In addition to using symbols, Scyther healing techniques might also involve the use of herbs, chants, or physical touch. The practitioner would enter a trance state, allowing them to channel healing energies and direct them to where they were needed. Protection Techniques in Scyther 
protection was another important aspect of Seder. Practitioners would use Seder symbols to create protective wards or shields, safeguarding individuals, homes, or entire communities from harm. These protective symbols served as barriers against negative energies, harmful spirits, or other forms of danger. They could be inscribed on doorways, carved into talismans, or even visualized in the mind's eye during a ritual. In addition to using symbols, Scyther protection techniques might also involve use of chants, offerings, and ritual actions. These methods serve to reinforce the protective symbols creating a powerful shield against harm. Tools and symbols in Seder. Seder practitioners used a variety of tools in their rituals, including staffs, distaffs, and talismans. These tools were often inscribed with Seder symbols, serving as a physical focus for the practitioner's intentions and energies. Seder symbols were a complex language of spiritual and magical meanings, each symbol had its own unique significance associated with a particular deity, spirit, concept, or energy. By using these symbols, practitioners could tap into the underlying forces of the universe, manipulating them for healing, protection, divination, and other purposes. Seder and Galder, a comparison. Seder and Galder were two distinct forms of magic in the Norse tradition each with its own unique practices, techniques, and symbols. While both involved the use of symbols and chants, there were key differences in their focus and approach. Seder was primarily concerned with divination, healing, and protection, and its practices often involved trance states and shamanic journeying. Its symbols were used as tools for connecting with the spiritual realm, manipulating fate, and channeling magical energies. Galder on the other hand, was more focused on the power of the spoken word. Its practices involved the use of chants, incantations, and runic inscriptions to invoke and control magical forces. While Galdar also used symbols, these were primarily runic in nature, each rune holding a specific magical power. Despite their differences, Seder and Galdar were not mutually exclusive. Many practitioners would have been skilled in both forms of magic, using them in tandem to achieve their goals. The choice between Seder and Galder would have depended on the situation, the practitioner's skills, and the cultural and personal preferences. Differences between Seder and Galder. While both Seder and Galder are forms of Norse magic, they differ in several key aspects. Seder is often associated with healing, divination, and protection, and its practices often involve trance states and shamanic journeying. Say their symbols are used as tools for connecting with the spiritual realm, manipulating fate, and channeling energies, as we've said before. On the other hand, Galder is more focused on the power of spoken word. Its practices involve the use of chants, incantations, and runic inscriptions to invoke and control magical forces. Galder symbols primar primarily runes each hold a specific magical power. Another difference lies in the societal per perceptions of these practices. Seder, often associated with women, was sometimes viewed with suspicion and even fear. Galder, however, was more commonly accepted, perhaps due to its association with the masculine sphere of warriors and poets. Similarities between Seder and Galder. Despite their differences, Seder and Galder share some common ground. Both forms of magic involve the use of symbols and chants to manipulate supernatural forces. Both also require a deep understanding of the symbolic language used, whether it's intricate symbols of Seder or runic alphabet of Galder. Additionally, both Seder and Galder were used for similar, similar purposes. They were both integral parts of Norse spiritual life, providing a means for humans to interact with the gods, spirits, and other supernatural entities. The role of Seder and Galder in Norse tradition. In Norse tradition, both Seder and Galder held significant roles. They were not just forms of magic, but also important cultural practices. 
that reflected the Norse wor worldview and societal values. Sather, with its focus on divination, healing, and protection, played a crucial role in maintaining spiritual health and well-being of the community. Its practitioners, often women, held important positions in society, providing guidance and support in times of need. <laughs> Galdar, with its emphasis on the power of the spoken word, was often associated with the warrior class and the skalds, the Norse poets. Its practices were used in a variety of contexts, from battle magic to poetic composition, reflecting the diverse applications of magic in Norse society. Sather in Norse mythology. Sather holds a prominent place in Norse mythology. It is often associated with the goddess Freya, who is said to have taught Sather to the Asir, the tribe of gods that includes Odin, Thor, and others. Freya, as the mistress of Sather, embodies the power and mystery of this form of magic. <coughs> Odin, the chief of the Asir, is another prominent figure associated with Sather. Despite the societal stigma associated with men practicing Sather, <coughs> Odin learned this art from Freya. But, excuse me. I got a frog. Odin learned this art from Freya in his relentless pursuit of knowledge and power. This association, association with Odin underscores the importance and potency of Sather in the face of societal norms and expectations. Sather also features in various myths and sagas, often serving as a plot device that drives the narrative forward. Whether it's a Sather practitioner fortune telling the future, a hero using Sather for protection, or a villain using Sather for nefarious purposes, <clears throat> this form of magic is an integral part of the rich tapestry of Norse mythology. Thank you. Please like and share.